you can use some more advanced functions in the formula questions feature of Canvas. Um, that includes layering different formulas. So we're going to look at how you can create, for example, a half-life problem. You're going to create a new question in your quiz, go down to formula question, create, find, or somehow get a half-life problem. I have this one. After 215 days, a 20 gram sample of an unknown radioactive isotope has decayed into 3.5 grams. Which is the half-life of this isotope? We don't want every student to have the same number of days and the same mass, so we're going to replace 215 days with a variable. Recall that variables go in square brackets when they're in the question, as it says up here. So let's say that's the amount of time that passes. 20 grams is the starting amount, so we can call that A1 if you want. And then it decays into 3.5 grams, that's the ending amount, we can call that A2. What is the half-life? So they're solving for the half-life. And logically it makes sense that they're going to solve for the half-life in days because it's given in days. You could be specific and say in days what is the half-life of this isotope. We have our variables and they populate down here. Sometimes you have to click off. So the amount of time that passes, we want it to be within a certain range that makes some sense. So let's say between 170 days and 250 days. Pretty wide range. And then we have the original amount, so maybe between 17 and 30. And then we have the final amount, we want it to be relatively small, so maybe between 3 and 7. Now uh, the days should probably be a whole number, but you can do whatever, whatever, you, whatever you want with that. But for the masses, we're going to add a decimal point. Unfortunately, Canvas does not do sig figs, so you can be specific and tell your students to always use to round to the hundredths place or to use three sig figs, whatever it is. In this case, we have different sig figs going on, so you could put two here, but do keep in mind that if you end up getting a number that ends in zero, like the 6.80, even though we said put two digits after the, the decimal point, it will not put trailing zeros. So just make sure your students are aware that if they do put in a number that has a trailing zero, it will disappear. All right, so when you are layering functions, you can create and name new variables here. So we know that for solving this equation for h, we would have to take the log. And let's say that we just say q. I just picked a random letter that's not already one of our variables. But that might be equal to the log of a half, because we know we're going to need that, and then you save it, and it gives you a zero. That's way too rounded, so what we're going to put is extra digits. We want to give as many digits as possible when you're creating those formulas in between. You don't want the computer to round too soon, because if we had not added those decimal points, it would have used a zero there. And then let's just pick another letter, such as W. And w is going to be the log of a2 over a1, because that's just how you would solve a half-life problem. And the same issue we have, well actually it's not an issue now because we already specified four decimal places. And then we can use this to put together our answer here. So if you do the algebra for this half-life problem using one of the many different variants of how it appears stylistically. I used A instead of N or whatever the other options are. We would get that the numerator is going to be T times the log of a half, but we define the log of a half to be Q just so that the final equation used to calculate the answer is not so messy. And then the denominator is the log of A2 over A1, but we said that was W. So we're going to put a W down there. And this gives us our answer. This says that after 96.8388 days, and you can modify um, the number of digits afterwards. I would recommend two or three. If we put just one, then it starts to get a little, a little iffy. So I would leave it as three. Now students don't actually need to put in the three to be correct. They could put in 96.8, and if you have a certain tolerance here in terms of a margin of error, that would be perfectly fine. So. This should make some sense. You can recompute multiple times just to double check what we have here. You can change things on the fly if you think that some answers are too close together, whatever the case may be. 
at this point you can generate a certain number of solutions so if you have 40 people in the class generate 40 different um, possible combinations that means everybody gets a different one and then you can have a 2% or 1% um, or an absolute margin of error I don't recommend you leave this as a zero because that would mean that people would need to get exactly 88.376 for example with these numbers here and you generate those they're going to populate you get to see ahead of time every possible combination and all of the answers that it creates so that is how you use multiple formulas to create slightly more complex ones effectively it involves naming your variables in the problem here and then those variables pop up you put the parameters on that you want for the question you carefully enter the equations that you have, the formulas that you have, you can define ones to make it easier. We didn't have to define Q and W, remember I just made those up, it could have been P and M or something, but you didn't have to define Q and W in this case, you could have used log of half and log of A2 over A1 and the T and all that in here, but you can see that doing it step by step helps to create um, a little bit more control. Additionally, if you do make a mistake, um, when you click and drag these, they reorder, but you cannot copy and paste this, at least it seems that you can't, if you were to make a mistake or wanted to copy this for later. What you can do though is right click and click slightly off, have some highlighted portion, hold shift and then hold left or right if you started on the other side and then you can command C or control C and then paste it. Um, it doesn't appear like you can interact with it, like here, you know, you can just highlight or whatever but down here it doesn't seem so. You have to be a little bit creative when it comes to interacting with those. So hopefully that helps with some of the complexities, but time-saving, ultimately time-saving ways to kind of help with potentially getting rid of some cheating and saving time with creating different versions of questions.